Hi, welcome to Creating Under Quarantine. This is Anina Collier with the Center for Creativity in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I am so excited for our first in our series of artists that are part of our quarantine exhibit. Her name is Angela Ambrosini and she is coming to us from New York. Hi, Angela. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> We are so happy that you're here. So introduce yourself just a little bit. Tell us about uh, who you are, where you are, and how long you've been isolating. So my name is Angela Ambrosini. I'm in New York. I've been isolated for entering my third month. So uh, excited for it to be over soon. <laughs> um, I'm not that far from the city. And um, yeah, I think, you know, hopefully as we enter the phases, we will be you know, seeing life as normal or somewhat normal in the summer. So looking forward to that. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, we know New York and New York City in particular has been, you know, hit extremely hard. Uh, we're talking today in, uh, in May, May 22nd, I think. Uh, so tell us about, you know, how, how uh, coronavirus has hit your community, your family, you know, whoever you feel comfortable speaking about. Uh, so New York, as you mentioned, you know, was definitely hit hard. Uh, my family is also in Italy, so kind of have the, the double factor going. Um, but luckily, you know, at, at least for my family, thank God, we, we haven't been, you know, we haven't had the virus. Um, I do know friends that have had it. Luckily, have been better. Uh, fortunately, also family members of theirs have passed. So, uh, you know, there's definitely some a lot of sadness um, and also financially almost everyone I know has either lost their job salaries have been cut for loads so um, you know we're definitely all in it together uh, it's definitely hit every single one that I know but um, you know we're we're seeing some positive uh, I, I, I'm hoping some positive side to things especially you know hopefully jobs will open up and um, people will get back to normal soon hopefully yeah, I hope so too. Well, you know, you you mentioned the positive side and, and one really interesting thing for you is that I don't know if it's positive, but you have had to find a whole new way to create art. So you describe yourself as a street photographer, a documentary photographer. Obviously, that is not something you can do under quarantine, but you have adapted and you have created um, the project that we will see as part of our exhibit. So tell us a little bit about what your work was like and then how you've transitioned it uh, to stay creative while isolating. So yeah, it was really difficult because I, as you mentioned, I couldn't go out. People weren't out, you know, it was hard to just meet people. And that's what I loved about the, the work that I did. And so, you know, work was, everything was online. Even my niece had her birthday online. So I started seeing a trend and I realized, you know, we either had to adapt, like you said, or, you know, just have to wait for life to go to somewhat normal. And uh, one day I just tried, you know, kind of setting up my camera, figuring out the lights and the technical issues uh, to, to actually shoot people through Zoom. And, you know, of course I took it a little step further. I really wanted to try to embrace, you know, how do I bring the streets, so to speak, into the work. And I reached out to people I didn't know or acquaintances that I kind of knew, tried to explain the project. And, you know, it was really difficult on two angles. Like I said, the technical side was kind of difficult. And then also having to meet people I never met, just, you know, getting to know them through Zoom and having them open up their life to me and so that I could document it. And, you know, there were some days where I was just like, you know, this is not going to work out. I'm going to stop. But I, I luckily have really good friends and family that pushed, you know, told me, keep going, stay positive. And uh, it really worked out. And it, it really, at the end, when I saw all of them, it was a good feeling and hope, you know, in a hundred years from now, people can see uh, the documentation that I did. That That is really a neat neat thing to think about. So the the people that you didn't know, how did you get connected to those folks? So I wanted to um, document someone that actually had the virus. And, you know, I knew friends that had it, but a lot of them were, it's funny, the people that I knew were just kind of shy and were like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want to be on. I don't want to, don't take me. Mm -hmm. And so I um, started looking for people online through Instagram and I came across a profile of an, of an individual that actually, you know, was very open about it and was talking about it. And I took my chances and I, you know, shot them a message and kind of told them about the series and they, 
to actually, like I said, I've never met them, but we became really good friends and it was just a really great experience also for me, not only as a photographer, but also as a, as a person to you know, connect with someone, learn about someone and have that empathy to, to really kind of showcase their life in, in the most beautiful way that I, I could possibly can. Where was that person located? They're actually in Illinois. So, um, you know, it was, uh, it was really cool because they were, they're in theater and, and they do a lot of different kind of, um, they, you know, obviously they're a creative to speak. So, you know, that kind of helped my pitch to them. But uh, it was interesting because I think they had plans to come to New York, but obviously couldn't because of everything that was going on. So yeah, no, they were in uh, Illinois and hopefully I get to meet them one day soon. <laughs> Yeah. And how are they doing? Are they fully recovered? Or? Yes. Yes. Luckily, fully recovered. Uh, still, you know, kind of going through some of the, you know, the issues that unfortunately the virus has just done to them physically. But um, I still, like I said, make, remain in contact with them and, and see her, their post constantly. So luckily they recovered. So I'm happy about that. Well, that's good to hear, and and what a neat story um, to to have about something that you know a, a connection you would have never made. And mm -hmm. um, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the technique? Like, how did you take a photo using Zoom? <laughs> I mean, that's just like what? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you do? So it was hard because I, you know there was a lot of pixelation in the beginning and, you know, obviously I have cameras, you know, uh, mirrorless cameras and, and full frame cameras that, you know, obviously alleviate that. And so I really played around with, you know, lights, uh, sometimes positioning the laptop and the camera in certain ways. And then when I did the post-production also trying to really figure out a way to embrace the pixelation. Um, I really struggled with that at first, but then I thought through the project and I realized, well, that's, that's actually the, the part of the project that I can't remove, which is, you know, life is virtual now. So I, I try to make that part of the piece in a way that looked good, um, obviously visually, but also was part of the feeling and the, I'm trying to make, you know, the art seem exactly how life is today, you know, chaotic and trapped and isolated and, and using, like I said, that pixelation in a way that really kind of portrays the life that we're living in, so. Yeah, and it, it really does. And to me, at least some of the, the pieces that you submitted uh, mm -hmm. for our show for consideration had kind of a dreamlike yeah. and maybe even a little nightmarish quality. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's, it's really, yeah. <laughs> it, you know, I felt the, the, the emotional reaction that I had to it, I felt mm -hmm. was very, you know, relevant to what we're yeah. we're going through today um uh can you tell us a little bit more about the piece that's part of the exhibition specifically uh yes i think the piece is it actually is a medical worker so um you know obviously they're the essential workforce and it was a friend of mine that i worked with for a long time and i knew that you know he was essential because i knew the, obviously the work that he did and um so i reached out to him and explain the project and you know he was it, at first you know he hesitated and he was like well you know I'm at work and he was busy but then you know it just kind of all happened kind of like in a dreamy kind of state he called me and he was like you know I'm at work now's a really good time it's now or never and I remember you know trying to set up really quickly and still shaking because you know it, it I had like five minutes to get this done and I think what I what I felt as I did more of these series was I kind of captured how I felt in the moment and how they felt. Um, and what was really, for me, what was really interesting was after the piece, you know, I sent them the piece and I showed them the piece, we started talking and we, you know, I think the isolation that I also felt that, you know, not, not connecting with people, that opened up a whole world to me because then I realized I had more phone calls, more Zoom calls than ever because people wanted to talk. And, you know, you kind of got into the stories either what we've done in the past or things that they, they were gonna happen in the future. And it was really nice, you know, to just have that connection with, with just another person. And, mm -hmm. you know, he talked about his work and, you know, how he was working, you know, around the clock and, you know, all the things that they were going through. And it was just, normally I wouldn't have that conversation. You know, someone I worked with in the past and, you know, you'd send two or three emails and that was it. Mm -hmm. And um, it really mattered to me. It really, you know, kind of, like I said, brought me into a place where I normally would never connect with people. So it was really 
It was really cool. It was really interesting. <laughs> so do you feel like this will change permanently the way you create art? Or do you think, you know, one day when we're through this, you're going to go back 100% to your usual uh, creative process? No, I think this actually changed me. I mean, I still love documentary and street. I, you know, I, I love... I like capturing life. I think that's something, you know, I'm a big sci-fi fan. So it's like, you know, I like, I like seeing things that normally you wouldn't see or things you wouldn't capture because the everyday part of life can also be beautiful too. But I think, you know, this really got to a level that I never expected before. I never really thought that I could really, you know, grapple all the different feelings at the same time. Also the environment, how I felt, how they felt, you know, usually it was always projected outward. You know, I was just the, the photographer. I was just showing what was happening in the immediate surroundings. But I think for me, this, this made me realize that I could actually kind of do like the pretty much all, all things, including myself, I could actually put myself in the piece without actually physically being in the piece, if that makes kind of sense. We are so excited to have your piece as part of the exhibition. We're so excited to share it with the world. Yeah, it's I'm an so international excited. exhibition. <laughs> and we want to make sure that everybody knows you're going to be teaching a free public workshop mm -hmm. as part of this series in June. So check our website to learn more about it and to register. It's centerforcreativitytulsa.com. So Angela, we will look forward to that so much. And thanks for joining me via Zoom. Thank you.